The Consumer Electronics Show, CES, just happened in Las Vegas a few days ago. I'm joined by Zach Scheidt, one of our top analysts. We were there, boots on the ground, and I can tell you right now, AI was the theme of the show. We have three hidden themes, and frankly, some stocks and some recommendations that might surprise you. So Zach, let's kick it off here. What did you see at CES pertaining to AI? What did you like? And what will surprise some of the viewers here at home? Yeah, it, it was an amazing experience, Matt. And you and I were both there. We, we saw all the booths. We went to keynote speaker events. Um, and this place, like, it takes over the whole city of Las Vegas. It's in the convention center. It's in the Aria. Yeah. It's in the Wynn. It's in the Venetian and all the other, you know, ancillary places. So it was amazing and somewhat overwhelming to see how much was going on. Uh, but when it comes to AI, it seems like every company was trying to say, we're doing something with AI. And it really, you know, you have to use some discernment to be able to pick out what is actionable, what is investable, what is actually putting AI to work, and what is kind of some of this faux AI. But we found three areas that are really using AI specifically to grow their businesses. And, you know, there, there's some great investment opportunities uh, that are tied to that. So the first one that I wanted to tell you about is... Uh, a, a booth that both Matt and I visited. Um, it has to do with the Snapdragon uh, computer chip that is being built by Qualcomm. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, in some ways, it's the answer to some of the other high value uh, AI type chips that are on the market right now. Uh, but now many other chip developers are in this business and they're building their own chips. Uh, so there's more competition which means better quality, which means lower prices, which means that AI can actually be delivered to the masses in many, many different ways. So this was, it was kind of more of a fun application, but you can see how it might work in the real world and how it might help uh, businesses to produce content, to, um, to get creative with their marketing and so forth. Uh, but we actually went to this booth where there was a Snapdragon chip that was on a local uh, I don't remember, Matt, was it on a local tablet or a local phone? Um, yeah, it could have been but, in a, yeah, some sort of little device, I think a tablet. But on a single device, and mm -hmm. you would speak to it and tell it, I want to see a picture of X, and you could say something crazy, like, I think you said, uh, in the future, uh, mankind will decide to vacation in the center of the earth. And you, you give it this phrase that might sound a little quirky or weird, and it actually creates an image, like a, a well-documented, artistic, very in-depth image of whatever it is that you say. And you can do it over and over and it'll, it'll compute what you're saying and, and put together this image. Um, but it was really interesting just to see like how much computing power it takes to put together a high quality, you know, very high contrast image like that, how it is actually thinking about, the computer chip was actually thinking about what you said and saying, all right, well, what would this look like? Taking voice word commands and changing it into some kind of visual output mm -hmm. um, and, and just the computing power that goes behind that and the potential applications for self-driving cars, for, uh, for content creation, for the media, for, for many other areas is just, kind of mind blowing when you think about it, computers that are creative enough uh, to draw you a picture and not just like a, a quick little sketch. It was a like a full blown artistic expression that was put together in just, what was it? Probably 15 seconds or something, maybe even less than that. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw a presentation as well from Qualcomm and some of their execs. And it, again, some of the stuff that they're showing there, they were talking about sort of like on device versus the cloud and then on device plus the cloud and QCOM and the ticker, right, Zach, you're, you're the analyst, but the yep. ticker's QCOM, right? Yep, yep, for um, Qualcomm, QCOM. Yeah. So they were just talking about the uh, transformative nature of what's happening there. And it is true. When you think about it, I think one of the references he had was, you know, a lot of us remember the show from the 80s, Knight Rider. You could just talk to, like, he could just talk to the car and the car would know what he's mm -hmm. doing. That's some of the technology too that we're talking about that can be held in the chip. Some of it could be talking to a cloud, but some of it might actually just be on the chip. So you tell your car to do something just verbally and it knows exactly what to do and it does it. Or maybe like what Zach was saying, was it was a little bit more creative of an example where it can create images. And the power of that is very, very awesome when it's not talking to the cloud. It's just something you're holding. So you could just be in a room by yourself with no Wi-Fi, nothing, and be able to have this 
creativity or functionality um, from AI. So QCOM's yeah, doing well. I think well. there's two, two, two really big benefits of that. One is like what you're saying, you don't necessarily need an internet connection to get all of the power that's built into this chip. So that's very, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. But then the other side of that is is just the security of it. Like if there's something that's sensitive, your bank account, your social security number, your your own financial plans, or even a business plan. Like if you wanted to talk through a business plan with this computer and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking of. What are the risks? What are the potential returns? Blah, blah, blah. And you don't want somebody else to be looking over your shoulder. Um, being able to do everything on premise. Uh, on prem is one of the key words that people are using now. Mm -hmm. is, a, is definitely a, a benefit to somebody who's worried uh, or at least just concerned as we all should be about digital security and, and privacy and so forth. Yeah. So again, Qualcomm chip maker in smartphones. So that's not super surprising that they've got cool AI tech that's that's coming down the road. What are some more surprising <clears throat> things that you saw, Zach? What are some other picks you like? What else did you see there? Yeah. So another booth that I visited that I thought was just pretty amazing was actually uh, a joint booth between Meta and Ray-Ban. And, um, you know, we've seen the Meta Quest Oculus uh, yeah. goggles and they're, they're all big and bulky. And, and my son actually loves them. He plays, um, he plays, I think he calls it Gorilla Tag, but with his friends, he's got them on and his friends from all over the neighborhood have them on and they're, they're running around and playing tag with each other. And, you know, it's a, it's a fun use of it and it's, it's neat that they can interact from, from different places. Um, but there's not a whole lot of business application to it. But when you think about using that technology and then bringing it into a more mainstream type of a, of a scenario, a situation where you can put on Ray-Ban sunglasses, sunglasses that you're willing to wear, that you want to wear out in public. You don't look like a geek. You don't look like a dork. But those Ray-Ban sunglasses might tell you as you're driving, they might have a heads-up display that says this is how fast you're going or you're approaching a school zone or there's there's traffic ahead or there's there's a, a pedestrian ahead that you need to be aware of. Those kind of glasses could help with safety. They could help with manufacturing where you know where the pieces are coming or there's even a, a instruction manual that comes into your vision so that as you're putting this piece together, you know exactly where it's supposed to fit. Uh, there are just so many different applications from a pair of glasses that actually make sense, that you can actually see through, that you would actually want to wear in, in a public setting. So I thought that was that was exciting. I'm not sure that I would necessarily recommend an investment in Meta. In fact, I know that you and I talked about another company that um, that is kind of on the cutting edge of this whole area right now that we are invested in. Um, but just being able to use the application of stuff that has been entertaining up to this point and now may have real use cases that that make sense that that can be used in business that can be used for safety that can be used in our in the course of our normal lives in a real uh, productive way is exciting yeah. to see that that technology emerging almost like the internet remember with the when we when we came up with the internet and it was like oh you can send an email to somebody you can type something and they'll get it why why is that so exciting but then what has the internet become like the applications have just expanded uh yeah, exponentially over the years. And I think that's what we're going to see with AI as well. Yeah. I will add one of the things we didn't see, because I like that. I saw a bunch of different AR, VR type goggles and glasses. I like the idea that Meta is working with Ray-Ban, because like you said, those are something you can wear and you don't look wacky. I will say from my standpoint, and I talk about this a lot with, at Paradigm Press um, with our editorial team. I'm excited. We've one of, the, one of the companies that wasn't present at CES was Apple. And I'm excited for their Vision Pro personally. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, a game changer for the goggle industry, at least, because you don't see many people wearing these. Because like you said, it's kind of they're kind of crazy looking. But I think the Vision Pro, which is set to launch on February 2nd, I believe, in stores, Friday, 10 a.m., February 2nd, um, that's when it launches. I think that could be a game changer. They're very expensive. I think they're 3500 bucks for these goggles uh, from Apple. But could be a game changer if people start adopting them and there's some cool uses um, and, you know, maybe we get down the, the road five years from now, just like iPhones or AirPods. At first they weren't around and then all of a sudden everyone had, they're just everywhere. Um, could yeah. be something that we see with goggles. So that would be people looking silly, but they don't care because they're so useful. So we'll see. And there's well, a ton of different companies that are making components for those things. It's an area to keep an eye on. If something blows up with the Vision Pro in a good way, that could be huge for the industry. I think you're right. And and I think that $3,500 price tag is genius for them. Even if, 
it could be a lot cheaper. The fact that it's $3,500 makes it somewhat out of reach for, for certain people. And I don't mean to sound elitist when I say that, because uh, I probably won't be buying one on February 2nd. Um, but the fact that it is a, a sought after expensive commodity makes it all the more of a, you know, a cachet type of a thing where people want to be seen wearing this. And then if people know that, you know, like it costs a lot of money, so I want to be seen wearing this, then it creates its own set of demand. And then Apple can eventually reduce the price, but it's seen as something that is, you know, high quality, must have, and it gives them all kinds of options as far as how they want to roll that product line out, which is, again, yeah. very good for all the, the, uh, the components and the, the companies that are making the chips, the companies that are making the, you know, the hardware that, that is needed to actually put that stuff together. Yeah. All right, now, Zach, I don't know what your third surprise is here, but I'm hoping it's the booth that you and I were at that I liked. So I'm going to let you go. What's the third thing that you <laughs> saw at CES? You bet we're going to find out here. What's yep. the third thing that you liked there? I, I th so there were a lot of booths that we saw together, but I'm going to say that this is the booth that you were excited about, and I was as well. Uh, the company is Deep X, and the that's it. So that's Deep the one. That was the one that blew my mind. Again, I I really liked what I saw there. Yeah. So Deep X is a smaller company. You can't, to my knowledge, you cannot invest in them. They're not traded on a publicly uh, publicly traded market, uh, but they make uh, a component that basically works with a camera or works with several cameras to quickly just incre at the speed of light analyze data and be able to tell you what's going on so they had several different displays up where you could walk in front of the display and it would say oh that's a person that person's wearing a backpack it would show like a, it's a 74 percent chance that this person's wearing a backpack there were there were many different little statistics that would pop up for every person that walked past this camera and mm -hmm. the end uses for that are are, are really exciting if you think about it. You know, from a security standpoint, you could set that up outside of a, a ball game or a conference or something, and, and know these people that are coming in. This person needs to be flagged because we need to make sure that they're that they're safe. These three people have nothing uh, that we would need to worry about that would be a security threat. There's uh -huh. also manufacturing applications. There was um, one of their displays showed a camera that would look at you, and as you were moving, it actually estimated where your bones were like your skeletal structure and it could tell you like what was safe and and ergonomically correct so you could put that in a in a manufacturing situation if your hands were outside of an area that they wanted you to be working in then they could let you know hey you need to be you know this is the proper technique to get this done or to be efficient or whatever um, and, and there were these cameras would also work with traffic patterns. So they had one set up over a, an intersection and you could see where everything was moving, where the bottlenecks were, how quickly cars were moving through, what the wait time was. Um, and so then you could use those and you could put those throughout a city and it would give you real time instant uh, data, but also could potentially switch cam uh, switch traffic lights or mm -hmm. traffic patterns or whatever to relieve congestion. Um, and there were several different cameras that, that were all set up in different places. So they could actually use triangulation to say, all right, this person is 37.6 inches away from the, the frame because of the way that they, they triangulated everything. It, it yeah. used uh, similar to the way that your eyes can see depth perception. So it was, it was the, the company made actually the processors that would take all of this, this data and then decide how do we want to show it or what do we want to do with this data to make it available? So I said that the company itself is not investable uh, right now. It's not a publicly traded company. But at the very end of the presentation, uh, we took a look at this poster that they had on the wall and they showed all of their customers, all of their partners uh, in technology, some of the companies that, they, that they're actually doing business with to get components and so forth. And so they're actually very active with other companies. So you can invest in other companies that are taking advantage of their technology. And three that kind of caught my eye were Samsung, uh, LG, and Dell, all three names that, uh, that we're familiar with just as far as the products that we buy and sell for our, that we buy for our own home, as well as stocks that you can invest in in the publicly traded market. So that yeah. was uh, quite possibly the most intriguing um, booth that we were in to be able just to see all the different applications, real world applications of AI that are functional already. Uh, and, and as we talked to this executive, he was saying like 2024 and 2025 are gonna be the years where this gets taken from, they've already created it, it's already working, they know that it works, and now they can just 
expand it out into uh, into the the real world and make it available to many different companies, to different uh, municipalities, to different corporations that are doing um, manufacturing or whatever it is that they're using these uh, these tools for. So it was pretty exciting. Yeah, the one the one tech that the reason we were drawn to that booth, they showed the screen, right? It had those like I don't know what it was, 30, 50 uh, different little screens, and then mm-hmm. the AI was able to crawl through all of the screens. So imagine again, you could think of it like you know, sports betting is a thing now. Imagine if you had all of the MLB games or NFL games on a TV and you at home could program the AI to say, when number 24 in this game does this thing, alert me. Or maybe not Mm -hmm. even alert you, do this action. And then all of a sudden you've got this whole thing. Again, that's just one weird little niche example, but you've got that one of the little screens that they had was a, it looked like there were dogs on the screen. So almost like a uh, doggy daycare. You could say, mm-hmm. hey, if this little black dog ever does this thing, <laughs> alert me or blow a horn or do whatever. So the other part that was cool about it, not only could it interpret the data, you could then create rules. So the company was uh, working on the, the the software, and I guess it's just working through their chip and uh, the tech that they've got, where you could create these rules. So this could have an at-home use too. Um, plenty of different things. Imagine if you just had, not only it's like a, a ring doorbell or something, that just kind of says, hey, there's someone at your front door and takes a video. This would be very, very smart and would be able to let you make rules around it and kind of create your own AI system around your house yep. if you wanted to. So that was really so, cool. And I like what you Matt, said. Matt, you and I, company. real quick, just jumping in there, you and I are both dads. And can you imagine, you know, they've already got the the monitors, the baby monitors, where you can say, like, alert me if this baby starts to move. But maybe you yeah. want to sleep if the baby just rolls over. But you could say, alert me if this baby sits up or alert me if the baby tries to get out of the, the crib. So there's yeah. some... Like just, just as a dad, I can think of that initially. Uh, something yeah, that was, over that really over well. a certain decibel level, and uh, then let <laughs> me know right. if it's under that decibel level. I don't, I don't need to hear it. Exactly. Um, but I liked what you said about the companies that they're that DeepX is working with, because it is a good nod in their direction. Because those are companies that are, uh, from my standpoint, I saw the technology. It wasn't available, um, you know, like out of the box, but. Um, they're using it. These other companies are using it. They're seeing something in it. And I like looking at companies that are on that cutting edge. that are taking this new technology that is unequivocal, like unarguably very cool, very useful. They're taking it and using it. They're kind of the pioneers and they'll reap the benefits if they find a way to use it, whether it's uh, in manufacturing or some other uh, platform that they could use. I, I do like all those companies there too. So Zach, any other, uh, any other last words from CES? I would just say stay tuned because there were a lot of things, a lot of notes that you and I both took, a lot of videos, yep. a lot of pictures that it took that I'm crawling through now and looking at, you know, what are the takeaways? So there's, I, I feel like this this whole conference is going to give me three to six months worth of research to do, and there's going to be plenty of takeaways from it as we move forward. Yeah, and the only thing I could say from my standpoint, you know, the conference is CES, but you might as well add two more letters on because AI was there mm-hmm. and it Absolutely. was heavy duty. It was in almost everything we saw. So we appreciate everyone tuning in. If you want more from us here at Paradigm Press, um, the Paradigm Profits channel, we're going out, we're looking for stories, investments, and ideas that people aren't publishing anywhere else. So if you like us, give us a like below, subscribe so you get an alert on the next time that uh, me or Zach goes live with any of our comment uh, commentary or any stocks that we like. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Zach.